uh, how to actually get to our, our site and we'll go over uh, our site as well. So um, should be sharing our screen. I'm actually gonna go back to Google. Many folks will, um, will ask what's the best web browser to use. Many of our um, uh, information in our, our apps, our uh, data sets on the auditor's office website uh, is best used in Google Chrome. So sometimes if something doesn't work on our site, uh, it's best to either download Google Chrome or use Google Chrome instead of Internet Explorer or Firefox, for example. So to get to our website, it's very simple. You can just Google Ashtabula County Auditor and hit enter there. And uh, we're the first option that pops up here on your screen. Uh, and here is the home page of our website. So always tons of information that we share out on our website. We're actually the number one visited website in the county because of all of our, our data and our information that people really enjoy using. So here on the home page, you can see that there's a um, uh, banners that go through and kind of highlight different things that are happening here in our office. And we also have the latest news and we have upcoming events. So on the home page, this is where you can always check and see well, what's going on. Uh, for one, we can, you can see that we certify the rates and uh, that will take you to an article with a lot of information and, and we'll, end, we'll end with that. Um, you know, next up, you can see that we actually have a land sale here coming up on February 3rd, a four for the land. And you can actually, uh, by clicking on there, you can view a map of the properties that we're having for sale. You can also view a, a total list of all the different properties as well, in case you're curious or interested to see what type of properties. We have a little over 100 properties that we're selling on February 3rd. So that information is up on our website. You can also see, I'll put in the plug for uh, community planning. If you're interested in signing up to be on the Asheville County Strategic Land Use Plan group, they have virtual meetings where you can give your input and advice. And of course, dog license season is uh, almost complete here. This, uh, January 31st is the last day to get your dog license in the, uh, the normal time frame. So if you haven't done that yet or are curious, you can click here to learn more about dog licenses. And then the last one, most of what we'll go over today is actually in this uh, banner right here, property taxes and values 101. And uh, uh, what I do here, and I'll add this video up on, on this page right here, I actually go through and I have screenshots of what some of the things that we'll be going over and looking at uh, tonight. So you can always refer back to this. You can find this page here uh, on the home page, uh, right um, last banner, property taxes and values 101. So as you can see, uh, our office is open. We've never closed during the pandemic. Uh, we are an essential business and we're doing essential business for you. So you can come in person if you'd like, but uh, essentially everything that you need to do except for the physical transfer of your property can be done from your home. And we definitely encourage you uh, to do that if you can uh, do any of your work with our office from home. Here at the top, tons of information. First, um, we have maps. Now, if you're first time here on our website, you probably have never seen our GIS, our mapping system. Uh, this is quite a, a, a unique and really um, awesome tool. We've had sessions just on GIS before. Essentially, this is Google Maps on steroids. And so, for example, let's say that you're looking up your neighbor's property. This even happened today, someone called. And you don't quite know where the, what the address is, but you know exactly where it is. Well, you can actually zoom in to the property and you'll be able to see what the parcel number is. Uh, you can click and you can learn what the address is, who owns it, and you can search here for more information. We also have a whole bunch of other um, things that you can look on here too. For example, right-of-ways, uh, different aspects for right-of-ways, um, cell towers, if you'd like to search for cell towers, water features, which you can see here shows different um, potential water features and, and things like that, wetlands, dams, whole bunch of information. Right? We could spend an hour on that, but uh, we wanna be less than you know, 20 minutes or so sharing that information with you, so we'll search, we'll go on from there. But you can use the map feature to actually search your property if you'd like to. What we'll hold on is the property search feature, but I do wanna to touch on a couple of the things here real quick. First, border revision. After we look at your individual property, if you think that that value that we've determined through the revaluation for 2020 as of January 1st is not correct, the Board of Revision is your option. And we'll go there after this. 
Real estate has a whole bunch of information. Things like uh, when levies are coming up, you can see how much a levy will cost you, different forms for our office. If you're interested in certain tax credits like CAUV, homestead, owner occupancy, tax rates for this year, border revision again, and also information on appraisal and, and valuation. We also have different information in terms of licensing, uh, financial information their office does. We do a whole bunch here in, in Asheville County. But we'll go back to property search. Now there's a handful of ways that you can search for a property. If you know the address, great, you can put that in. If you know the owner, great, you can put that in. You probably will not with a parcel. A parcel, every uh, individual piece of land in any county in Ohio has a parcel number, which is an individual, essentially a tax identification number for that a piece of land. And you can search via the parcel number, uh, but you probably will not, will not know that. Advanced search has a whole bunch of other features where you can um, search uh, based on um, a bunch of different criteria. Um, things like a street number, for example, street name. Let's say you wanted to search for a certain street name. Sales price, you wanna see in Asheville County uh, homes or properties that went over or under a certain amount. Whole bunch of different information here that you can search with. And I encourage you, if you do wanna use this, to read the instructions, but also give us a call and we'll be more than happy to walk you through any of those two. So we'll go back, the two most common are address search and owner search. And this can sometimes trick folks up. So I'm gonna go through both real quick with you. First, and we're gonna use my property. Folks will joke and say, hey, you put your address out there for people. Um, and, and you know, my cell phone, email address, personal home uh, is all there for the public. Uh, some people laughed when they heard the tax rates were available. The first thing they did was go on our website and search up my property to see how much my taxes went up. And you'll see about 550 bucks. So if you're gonna search by address, what you'll wanna do is put in the address number. So in my case, I'm 7263. Now there's a couple different things here. Sometimes folks get caught up, especially in our county, in certain parts of our county, um, as you know, Route 20 can be called a whole bunch of different things. It depends on what we have Route 20 listed as. So sometimes you may actually just want to search by your house number instead of going in and putting in the entire address. Because, for example, 7263, what I have, there's only actually three properties in our county that have the address of 7263. And you can see three different roads there. So that would be my recommendation whenever you're using our site for the property search, just search by the street address. Now for owner, that can get a little bit confusing too. So unfortunately, for example, um, if there are two names on the deed, unfortunately, our system only allows you to search by that first name. So if you're looking for a husband and wife and you only know the wife's name, um, it's very possible that the husband's name is listed first on the deed and thus first on the owner search. You won't be able to search with the wife's name. And so what you wanna do in that case um, is either use the address tool, uh, which you can definitely do, use the map tool, or you could search by the last name and try your best and hopefully it's a, a very uncommon last name. Or also you can give us a call and we'll be more than happy to try and see what we can do for you. So we'll search by my name. You can see uh, I've done this before. Um, so you wanna do last name, space, first name. And again, too, if you think someone goes by, uh, let's say um, Ray, but you don't quite know if they put Raymond or something else in for their first name in terms of the legal deed, do as few characters as possible. Let's say someone maybe didn't know if I went by David or Dave, Thomas, D-A-V, and we'll search, and there's two here. So always better to put um, smaller characters if you can. So you can see uh, I own two pieces of property here in the county, my home and an acre uh, right to the north of me. You can see the parcel number here, that's your individual parcel ID number. It's created when, uh, when that parcel was made, either when it was split off from another parcel or way back to the very beginning of our county when that parcel was created. So you can do a couple different things here. You can actually, let's say you're looking for um, some a very common uh, uh, owner name or um, you're looking for a person that you know owns a whole bunch of properties. You can actually uh, type that in will come up with a whole bunch of different options for you in terms of what properties. And then what you can do, you can select all, you can view by list, or you can even view their tax bills. And we'll, we'll see that here pretty soon. There's also a printable version also. So we're gonna go to my home. So this is uh, your property page. This is your individual property information, 
which uh, all things property tax and property values will be based on. And again, if you've got questions as we go through, please type them in. I'm more than happy to answer or look at anything for you. But you'll see here, parcel number, you'll see the name, address, once again, class. Now, class is, um, is important because there's three different buckets in terms of property taxes. So all residential and agriculture properties are taxed in one bucket with the same tax rate. All commercial properties are taxed in one bucket at the same tax rate and all industrial, uh, I'm sorry, commercial industrial is, is one bucket and then public utility is the third bucket. So you wanna be sure that you have the right class because if you are, for example, a uh, home you moved into used to be a storefront, but now it's a home. And if it's still being taxed at a commercial rate, commercial rates are higher, meaning businesses are taxed at a higher amount than residences are. And so you wanna make sure that we've got the right classification in there. If you're residential or agriculture, it doesn't really matter either one, same thing with commercial or industrial. Um, but as long as you're in that bucket, you're, you're good. Now land use code, that's just different information for our office. Acreage, you always wanna make sure that the acreage is correct. This is, it could be something that if you have an old survey, this is one of the reasons why we mandate surveys be updated uh, to meet current standards, because we've seen some that they're, they're 20 or 30 acres actually off. And we've been overtaxing property owners for quite some time. So we'll make sure that that's correct. And down here, taxing district and district name. So this is important because this is the political subdivision where you live. So for example, I am in North Kingsville Village, Buckeye local, local school district. Typically you'll see a local entity, either a township or a village city and your local school district. That's kind of a basic taxing district. Now some, uh, for example, some of the longest ones, uh, you can be in Ashtabula City, in Ashtabula Township, um, in Asheville Area City School District, and for example, in the Harbor Tofty uh, uh, Library District. So you've got four different political subdivisions all layered right on top of you. And that's important because this determines what levies uh, you can vote on, who you can vote on for your representation, and what your tax amounts are. So it's important to, to know this. Now, gross rate and effective tax rate. Your gross tax rate is what your tax should be um, with uh, no other considerations. So this is based in mills. And a mill is $1 per $1,000 of value. So basic calculation would be a $100,000 home. Let's say your property is valued at $100,000. There's a levy on the ballot for one mill. So that levy is one mill, $1 per $1,000 of value. So it should be $100 because it's $1 per thousand. So there's $100,000 of value in your property. So that mill is uh, $100. Now you're actually taxed though, and this is where uh, many people get confused. And you'll see as I go through, I say that a lot, that there's lots of confusing pieces here. It's on our website, more information about this. But you're actually taxed not on the market value, what our office says your home is worth, but on the tax value, which is 35% of what our office believes your property is worth. So this millage here, the gross rate, which for my uh, entity is 71 mills, that would be essentially $71 um, per $1,000 of value, taxable value. So if my home is worth $100,000, what I would actually do is I would multiply $100,000, because that's the market value, by 35% to make it the taxable value, which is 35,000. And my, my tax rate would be $71 per thousand dollars of value. So it'd be 71 uh, times 35. Um, so it gets a little bit confusing there, but the important thing is this is what your gross rate is. That's how much you should be paying. But actually what you are paying is called your effective tax rate. And that's um, what you are actually paying on, how many mills you're paying on, based on a whole bunch of different factors. For example, and we'll see this later on, as time goes on, when you vote for a levy, what you're actually voting for is not necessarily the one or the two mills that you see on the ballot, but you're actually in a sense voting on how much money you're telling the school or the library or the village they can collect from the property owners. 
there are levies, as we'll see here, from the school district I live in, Buckeye, from 1980s, that have been collecting the same amount of money every single year. And so over the years, they charge a lower tax amount because there's more value, more buildings, more uh, families living in the, in the tax district. And so more people to spread around the overall tax charge from that levy. And so what used to be an eight mil levy, you'll see is now a, a three mil levy is costing much less because there's more people to, to pay the bill. So that's the effective tax rate, what you're actually being taxed on. When you scroll down here, occasionally the owner address, um, folks will call us and say, hey, this is not correct. Uh, that's the owner address at time of purchase. So it's, it's possible it might be a little bit different. Tax mailing address, you wanna make sure that this is correct. You can see here, my mortgage is with Andover Bank. This is where your tax bill is sent to. Now, a, a quick delineation, the treasurer's office handles tax collection, tax payments. So when you actually pay your taxes, you pay it to the treasurer's office. If you wanna set up a payment plan or have late payments, it's actually to the treasurer's office. Many people will call us first and we'll have to send them over to the county treasurer's office. So you'll wanna make sure that the tax mailing address and name is correct. And you can update that on the county treasurer's office website if you'd like uh, for the, you know, your last name change, for example. Certainly you'll wanna update that if it's not the correct address. Legal description we can skip. Now here are taxes due for 2020. So you can see here, if there's any delinquent tax amount, that will be here, first half and second half taxes. So this is um, split up between two halves. First half is due on February 17th. Second half is due traditionally in mid-July. And here's my total amount that I owe for 2020. Now tax year 2020, you actually pay your taxes one year in arrears, one year behind. So the taxes that you pay this year are actually based on your January 1st, 2020 value. So last year. And folks will say, well, I'm transferring my property. I'll no longer be owning it or I'm buying a new property. You know, don't the old owners pay for the taxes? Well, actually tax charges stay with the property. No matter who owns it or when things transfer, the tax charges always stay constant with the property and they're based on the year prior. So essentially, I've lived in my home during 2020, and these are the taxes for that entire year I've lived there. And that's handy because changes can occur. For example, if, if you have a, a house fire or damage, we can change your value during your years that you're not paying more than what you need to, which is very nice. Now, there are two credits down here below. Homestead exemption is for folks who are 65 and older, permanently disabled, or are veterans and permanently disabled. There's an income threshold too. And that's a huge savings. It takes off $25,000 off the value of your home, usually about $450 or so in a savings. Owner occupancy is a savings if you live in your home and own it. So essentially it's a, it's a savings for folks who are not renting out residential properties. Both of these forms can be found under real estate and owner occupancy and homestead. So that's the front section. Now here on the right, you can actually see a couple more uh, pieces of information that are quite useful. The biggest being the tax bill. You can actually, if you'd like, now we'll see if Zoom captures this in terms of sharing the screen. It might not, I'm not entirely sure. You can actually print off your tax bill, look at it right now, even before tax bills are mailed out right from our website. And of course it might be uh, not quite working or a little bit late. Oh, here we go. So here is your actual tax bill. You can see it. This will be a copy of what you receive in the mail at some point. Now, if you pay uh, via mortgage, as I do, and you can see here Andover Bank, then you will not get a tax bill, perhaps. And so it's important to see what it looks like and to know your information on our website, which is, which is what we're doing right now. So that's your tax bill. You can print it out. You can attach that when you send your payment anytime now. There's also other information. You can look up neighborhood sales in your local area. And you can also look up uh, different summaries as well, printable version of, of what we're looking at right here. So that's your home front page. Once again, if I'm going too fast or if you have other questions, please feel free to message in. Next page down is your values. So this is what the auditor's office does. This is kind of our bread and butter. On top of dog licenses and IT for the county, payroll, finances, weights and measures, everything else that we do. This is our role and function. 
is determine your market value as of a certain date. So what you see up here is appraised value. That's the market value. That's what our office believes your property is, is worth. You can see 2020 is the year. So that's based on January 1st of 2020. The appraised land, my land, my one acre, my office determined is $33,000. That's what the open market based on averages, based on local conditions, based on what the market says in my area is $33,000. Appraised building is $163,700. So combined in total, my office believes my property is worth $196,700. $196, now remember, when I talked about mills previously, how you're taxed on $1 per $1,000 of taxable or assessed millage. So you can see here, or assessed value, I apologize. That's 35%. So we break it down for you. And essentially what you're being taxed on, that $1 per $1,000 of value is right here. So my market value is 196. My taxable assessed value is 68,000. And down here, you can see value history. You can see in year 2018, so on January 1st, 2018, my office believed that my property was worth $177,600. Now here's a, a big um, um, kind of confusion, a myth that I myself thought and knew when I um, started and didn't quite understand. What you see is 2018, 2019, and 2020. And why that's important is that folks um, will see 2019 to 2020. That's, that's a decent increase. They'll say, well, how did my property increase in, in this case, um, $19,000 in just one year? That doesn't make sense. How can something raise that much in value? I've seen some values um, increase by $50,000 from this line to this line. Well, what 2019 actually stands for is our revaluation cycles. So every six years, our office revaluates, which we just completed based on January 1st of 2020. We revaluate every six years properties in the county. Every three years, we do a small market update to see sales, make sure that we're roughly correct. So really what this value stands for is not 2019. It, it is in a sense, but it's actually based on the 2014 revaluation that our office did for Ashtabula County. So that value um, didn't really increase by $19,000 per se uh, in one year. It actually increased in a sense over six years by $19,000. And when we explain that to folks, then typically well, that can make more sense, especially if you know a realtor, if you know anyone in the real estate market, um, in terms of uh, our market here in Asheville County has been quite on fire over the last two or three years. And when we do revaluations, the state mandates that we take into account really just the year before. So 2019 and 2020 were the years that we looked at for the revaluation. So this is your three years. Now, our office has values going back really to the 1800s, uh, easily accessible to 2008, if you're curious. Many folks' values here in the county we've seen went back to pre-recession value times, back to 2008 or prior. Um, and it depends on you know, if you do additions to your home, if you do upgrades in terms of a garage or maybe a porch, different changes that you might do to your property. Square footage is one of the largest indicators of value because we average a square feet in market sales for your neighborhood. So that's where your value tab is. Now land, this will give you more information on your land, um, what the acreage is, what the square feet is, um, uh, different rates that we, we assign um, essentially, my office would determine that an acre of uh, land in uh, North Kingsville would uh, run you right around $32,000, um, especially a home site acre. So that's kind of some more information there. Now, sales, this is any past sale information that will be useful in determining value. So you can see my home sold uh, February 8th, 2019 for $198,000. Land and building, different information here. My value is right around right there. Sale price is a huge determinant. If you're on CAUV, there's information here on CAUV. You can see dwelling. This is really important to hone in on, to look and see and make sure that all this information is correct, because this is what we'll use as the, your property information to determine your value. Uh, how many square feet? What year was it built? If there were upgrades, what is the effective year? If you're in the middle of construction, how, how complete is it? 
how many uh, stories is it? Roughly, you know, what kind of condition is it in? Good, great, average, fair, horrible. Uh, how many rooms? What type of basement? What type of heat or uh, water as well? Um, is there an attic? Uh, any of that type of information is very important for us to be able to use. And then we use all of that to make averages and determine your dwelling value. And here you can see, these are either uh, wooden decks, these are um, other buildings that are not attached to the property. This is a garage, for example. All of them could potentially add value. And this is important if there's a fire or let's say you got rid of a shed that we have value on. Well, we need to know that so that we can make sure that your value is correct. And letting our office know is very important with that. Now, this is an outbuilding. So for example, you can see I have a frame utility shed and that has no value um, because it's, it's about to fall over. And we take, of course, into consideration uh, condition. Photos. Um, these are traditionally from 2012, uh, quite outdated photos. That's my property uh, as of 11, 29, 2012. Funny enough, it costs about 300 to $400,000 to do photos of every house and property in the county for the revaluation. And I determined that that just was not worth the cost. And so we did not update photos for this year. Now map, you can actually go back, as I said, maps we saw earlier, you can see and look at your property and see how it compares to others in the neighborhood what the, um, what the overarching uh, look is, that type of thing. Sketch is very similar. Now we're gonna go down to tax summary. So tax summary, this is your taxes broken out um, in one aspect uh, for 2020. So remember when I said that really, you should be charging me 76 mils, that was the um, gross tax rate. Well, this is what we would be charging me, $4,800, except there's a whole bunch of different things that go into that too. Reduction is when we talked about actually looking at the levies that are on the books and saying, um, for example, some of the older levies that are actually now charging less effective millage because of new value or new uh, purchasers and uh, new construction in the, in the taxing district. And because there's more people that share the tax burden, everyone's taxes go down then. And thus, I have a $1,800 reduction for that. That's my then adjusted charge. Every non-business property gets a business, non-business credit. I received the owner occupancy credit because I own my home and I live in it, so that's $66. So then this is what my new charge becomes, $2,667.38. But there's a special assessment on every um, parcel, improved parcel for two things. One for 911, um, that's, uh, uh, and the other is for recycling. Every improved parcel in the county gets a charge for recycling. And so my total full year charges, $2,676.88. And it's broken down, you can see in first half and second half. So now you can look and see your current year tax summary versus your prior year tax summary. And where does it fall down? Now you can see my taxes went from 2,100 to 2,600. And you can break down and you can look and see, well, what were some of the reasons? Now, one of the big reasons for about half of that, maybe a quarter, my prior owners qualified for the homestead tax credit on January 1st of 2019. And so my property, because it sticks with the property, not with the owners, my property qualified for that in 2019, the homestead tax credit, and that saved $354. I am obviously not over 65 or retired. And so I no longer qualify for that tax credit and thus it's zero. And that's part of the reason for the increase. So you can see year over year of what those differences are. You can also now see, sometimes folks will call in and say, hey, there's an abandoned property next to me. And I'm really curious because there's no way they're still paying taxes and it's gotta be foreclosed on soon. Well, this is where we'll look and see, well, actually no, still someone's paying taxes on it. That happens quite a bit. And you can look and compare when taxes were paid. So my previous owners pay consistently every half, February, June, February, June, February, June. And you can see some of the different charges went from nine, uh, 66 back in 2010 to all the way down to at some point uh, $634. That's probably when they received Homestead. And then it started to inch back up depending on values and what new levies were being passed in the county. And now um, uh, you can tell I actually just uh, uh, um, had this from last year when I purchased, uh, no, I'm sorry, when the loan, the loan must have been paid. Uh, Andover must be changing and, and they're just paying once a year as opposed to uh, twice a year. So you can see your payment history.
yearly summary, another way to look at your 2018, 2019, 2020, how much was applied. So you can look and see well, 2018 taxes for 2094, 2019 taxes for 2100, and then 2020 taxes are 2600. Special assessments. This is the breakdown of some of the charges of special assessments. Like I said, for the most part, most everyone will see a countywide recycling program. That's five dollars, and the 911 emergency telephone, and that's four dollars and fifty cents. And then the last um, page here, which will come up, really important page, is the tax distribution. So this is where we show folks. You know, they'll ask, well, why did my taxes increase? And the first place we'll look is, are there any new levies that were added to the tax bill? Here's a breakdown of every single levy, every single tax amount that's being charged on my tax bill. Um, it goes from uh, the county, how much the county receives in, $645, to Buckeye Schools, $1,500, to ATEC, $156, North Kingsville receives $340, Kingsville Public Library, 140, County Metro Park is $31, and the Ashburn County School Financing District, which is the old Happy Hearts School, receives in $96. And you can break down and you can look and see what year the levy was uh, passed, what the gross tax rate was. So this goes back to, as a great example, um, Buckeye Local Schools District. Uh, an eight mil levy was passed back in 1978. And I, I don't know how much money the school collects in from this specific levy. I could look that up uh, if I wanted to. But over the years, in uh, the what, um, 40 years that that levy has been in the books, enough value has been added, enough people have moved in, enough um, folks have been uh, contributing to the pot that that amount that they passed back in 1978, the school still receives. But now it's only actually charging two and a half mils for that levy, which is a, a um, tremendous reduction down in the actual cost uh, to the property owner. So uh, there's a question, is the information the same for people in each county? Is there are several watching from Trumbull County? Oh, hi, Trumbull County folks. Um, well, actually, uh, uh, so every county may have different um, web services. I've actually been told that our website, our information is one of the best in the state. Um, I'll, I'll definitely uh, agree. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I don't quite know what Trumbull County, what other counties may have in terms of their real estate software and what they can see, but this information is certainly requestable for folks. That's not a problem at all. Um, so you can see the, the different years that they were, they were passed, and we have, a, and we'll be sharing out a whole kind of dissection of all this information that's very easily seen, but this is a good overview to see. Now, you can look and, and compare in 2019, I had a new levy of $96 for the school financing district. And were there any other new levies in 2019? Um, there were not in my county, in my district. However, across the county, there were nine new levies passed in 2019, which caused a, a good number of, um, of uh, uh, you know, taxes to increase. And similarly, this past year, we saw, I think, five or six new ones, which uh, cost about $1.5 million of new taxes. Uh, to be added to the tax bills, which you'll be able to see here. So take a look, and if there's no new levies, then any changes in taxes will be due to value. And where that would uh, impact you, for example, your value, what you pay your taxes on, is based on your property's value in relation and proportion to the district's value. So if you have, let's say, one one thousandth of the district's value, there's 999 other properties and they take up the rest of the value, your individual value is one one thousandth of it, then roughly your tax burden would also be one one thousandth of that entire tax burden because it's, it's about equal with your value burden. Let's say your value this past reval went up, talked to a property owner this morning, this happened to them, their value went up by about $20,000, again, over six years, that's not too unreasonable, but their district's value, the average value in their taxing district actually went down. And so what that means is that that person now has a much higher portion of the overall value for the tax district than they did a year ago because others went down and theirs went up. And so their taxes then were increased about $600 due to that change in value proportions. One new levy was added. So that was one of the, one of the reasons for the $600 increase. So this is your personal property, your information um, where you can go and you can look and see all these different pieces right here. And after you inspect, make sure that the, the information is correct. 
Um, you look at the levies. If you still think that your value is, is not quite accurate, which can happen. We have over 80,000 parcels that we value and are responsible for here in Ashtabula County. So naturally, we're gonna make mistakes. Now that happens, you can go to our um, border revision tab, which is right here. Border revision is the board, um, it's great. What other tax are you able to actually contest? None, income tax, sales tax, um, uh, you know, uh, license fees, different things like that. Property taxes, you can contest on the value. If you disagree with your tax amount, but you think your value is accurate, unfortunately, there's nothing that we can do. Your value is what our office determines and what you're actually able to contest. And so if you believe your value is incorrect, you can go to the Board of Revision and you can contest that value. We have a yearly summary here. We've got the different forms that you can fill out. I have a, an interview with our Board of Revision clerk where we explain the whole process. And really this page has some excellent information for what we look at. We adjust values, we don't adjust tax dollars. Now, of course, let's say that you come in and we have your value at $200,000, but the Board of Revision agrees with your complaint that really it should be 175. You'll get a credit or a check for the difference of what the tax amount would be from that 200,000 to the 175,000. But we can only adjust the, the value for your property. And so all this information goes through the whole process and procedures. You can download the forms, um, fill them out. We have fillable PDFs. You can email them into us. We make all of this very easy and straightforward for folks because ultimately it's your tax dollars and we wanna make sure that they're done correctly. Now we had another question regarding some of the different credits. So under real estate, you can see, and let's go to CEV first. So CEV Forestry and Agriculture District. If you farm or if you have property, over 10 acres is the minimum, 10 acres of farmland or of woodlands, you can qualify for CAUV, which is the current agricultural use valuation. And what that says is instead of it being valued, that property as traditional land, remember North Kingsville, it's $33,000 an acre. Instead of it being valued at that, what it would actually be valued at is what the, the, crop, um, uh, what the crop value could be. Uh, it's a very, very low. In fact, um, we just got numbers this morning. Uh, the difference between what the CUV values are for that cropland and what market values are decreased another $1.5 million this year, which is a great savings for our farmers. And essentially, it's for farmers, folks who own property that is farmed, or if you have woodlands, you can actually, if you plan to commercially farm your woodlands or timber your woodlands at some point, you can qualify for that too. So this is the CAUV and agriculture page. And then the other um, tax credit is homestead, as we shared, and owner occupancy. And you can read up all about homestead and what the different qualifications are. Here you can see 65 years or older, you own and occupy your residence as of January 1st. This is the different income thresholds, which are set by the state. And this is the disability information as well for how you can qualify. All of the forms are also right here on the website. You can also watch an educational interview with myself and our um, border revision and homestead, I'm sorry, border revision um, staff member, Chris, where we go through some of the different questions that people ask. So this is where you would um, go to, to apply, and you can do it via mail or email as well for the homestead. And so that's kind of a quick overview of how our website, you see the information in terms of your individual property. And once again, we're gonna go back to our homepage because a lot of this is actually right here in property taxes and values one-on-one where you can go through and you can see all the different parcel summaries. You can see what I just showed you and went through here on our page. And also I would encourage you, I have another webinar where actually I go over and look and go into more depth and detail on millage, on tax rates, on um, how different levies can impact you, on the impact of values. And it's a much more uh, detailed discussion on uh, property taxes. But this I wanted to show many folks, there's just so much information on our website. So I wanted to go through our website, how to search it and how to find out information on your individual property as well. Um, and if you, again, have questions, if you have issues, here's the contact information for our office. We're right here in the county courthouse. Once again, never been closed, never will be closed. More than happy to welcome you here or you can call us, uh, you can email us and um, we'll answer you right away. You can fill out this in inquiry form. Uh, this goes to my direct email. 
Um, I try and answer the phone here as much as possible. And of course, if you're uh, watching this, you've already been at least some way connected with our office. Um, so hopefully this kind of helped to give out some information to you. Uh, again, we're um, excited to explain, to, to talk through anything um, and uh, look forward to, to hearing from you, if not, but hope you're, you're doing well. And uh, I don't see any other questions here. So we'll have this video up on our website afterwards if you'd like to rewatch it or share it with friends. Um, but thank you so much for, uh, for listening and uh, have a wonderful rest of your day.